Morning, everybody. Welcome to the United Stand. Hope you're all doing well. Mark is having a morning off uh, today, so I'm in charge. We're going to do it. We've got plenty to talk about. We're talking about the reports from the Sun and a few other media outlets that are talking about United Spend. What we've got to spend this summer, is it enough? We'll talk about that. Obviously, United haven't got the ambition for certain players now, a la what Romano was saying regarding Haaland and his move to City. United completely dismissed Oof, bad signs ahead, you would say. Definitely when you've got the better players saying things like that. When was it ever a case that Manchester United did not have ambition for certain players? Sign of the times, plenty to discuss there. We're going to bring you guys in towards the end of the show as well. Obviously, I want to play a little bit of uh, this free transfer game where we actually discuss how we can budget around this transfer window in terms of what realistically we have got to spend. Why have we only got this to spend? We'll touch on all of that, what Romano said, what the journalist is saying, and obviously we'll get into all of your opinions on what you think is the best option and the key areas on that pitch and in that team that we need to be looking at. Uh, guys, cheers for tuning in, everybody. Get your comments in in the comments section. Uh, we're going to get into this now and actually dissect what is going on at this football club at the moment. I mean, you guys follow me all around, obviously the road trips and everything like that. You know my opinions on what's happening on the pitch and obviously when we do the fan vlogs, we actually look at it and most people's opinions now are looking towards the back end of this season in terms of when is it finished? The more excitement, I said the excitement in the fan base isn't regarding match days anymore, which is sad on its own. It is actually going towards the summer and the transfer window and this is going to hot up now this is going to start getting it's going to start getting a bit more traction obviously we've got ten Hag coming in the summer we know that uh romano has said obviously he's very close to uh finalizing his number two with mitchell van der Gaard as well their um, details are in the final stages now as well so all good in terms of uh coaching structure and stuff like that but really we want to know is what's happening with this squad what is going on why is manchester united only got this amount of money, this amount of money to spend in the summer. We'll lead with Neil Custis from the Sun, who said that uh, United have been telling agents to be on the lookout for the best free agent options around because we only have a small amount of money to spend. There is no bottomless pit of cash, in his words. In this, it's been reported that it is around a hundred million. Now, I know what you're all thinking: a hundred million. Not ideal, not considering the amount of players that are leaving. And this is just how the club has been running, how poorly uh, everything has been uh, going on behind the scenes because the amount of players that are leaving of the higher quality bracket this summer on a free transfer, I mean, I wouldn't throw Jesse Lingard in there. I can't, I, he's not contributed nothing. But you'd say like the key positions where players are missing and are leaving this summer on a free. You just talk about Pogba, central midfield. We're desperate in that area. Cavani, a striker. With what's happened to Greenwood, we are desperate in that area. We lost two strikers there. Another midfielder, Matic, is going. Wow. I mean, these are players that have won the biggest trophies in European football, all leaving Manchester United this summer. And our business model has allowed these players to leave on a free. So, £100 million to replace... That calibre of player, just them four positions alone, two strikers, two midfielders, which we know we pretty much need, 100 million, isn't even going to scratch the surface. And where do United actually gather any more money to actually contribute to this budget? Because there's not a lot of value within our squad. And again, an example of how crap this club has been run. So realistically, we're looking at whatever we can and where we can scrape a deal. And this is now down to the new directors of football, Myrtle, whoever it is, Fletcher, whatever his role is, I've got their work cut out this summer. Hello to Bruno Andy. Cheers for the super chat, mates. Good morning to everyone else just joining in. Do stay right to the end of this video, guys, because I'm bring you guys in on everything uh, towards the back end of the show as well. We're going to do a bit of a special a breakdown. We're going to get into some ideas of players that we can actually get through the door that we think might actually help out. That are not going to cost a lot of money. But 100 million, let's start with this. Neil Custis going right in on it today. Uh, and you know what? Custis has been reliable a lot of times in the past. He has brought up stories and they have been on the money. Uh, personally, I've actually met uh, Neil. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's one. That's one for me. And he does do a lot of background work and he does do 
a lot of digging around and has got a lot of contacts around Manchester United. Uh, you don't really need him to really tell you, though, do you? Like I just said in the breakdown that I, I've just put out there then in terms of how this club has run and why we've only got so-called this amount of money to spend this summer. It all depends on how we structure our window. I mean, you've got to look at it straight away. I mean, one of uh, one of the key areas, like I just said then, we've got the midfield and attack. One of the key areas that we need to strengthen this somewhat is obviously in defence. There's plenty of, I mean, you could go right across the board. All four positions, centre-back, centre-back, left-back, right-back, wing-backs. However, Ten Hag is going to play it or he's going to put his team out there next season, formation-wise, then you could say easily, from what we've seen this season, we are going to need a we're going to need a player in every single one of them positions. It's no, it's no loss to everyone. It's not a miss to everyone how bad we are all over the pitch, and we have to prioritise now. Where would Ten Hag and his system benefit more with this hundred million that is what we have got to spend this summer? Can we sell any players? To make a little bit extra, can we sort of put players in on deals? All this is going to have to come and it's going to have to be brought up by the new directors of football, the people in the positions that are going to be making these deals at Manchester United this summer. It's going to be a difficult task. It really is. And like we've said on many of shows before, it's a short window. First week of August is when the season kicks off. So, and we haven't got any room for error right now. We cannot afford to... Be, we can't afford not to hit the ground running to start our next season. We cannot afford it. So, 100 million, I mean, who is that? I mean, there's a report, uh, a United Journal coming up. Uh, Ralph Ranić, obviously, with his ties to uh, Germany and obviously RB Leipzig, they have a player there that isn't out of contract, isn't on a free, but entering the last year of his contract in uh, Nardi Mukulele. I think I've said that right there. I can never get the I's and the E's bang on. That's just my Mancunianness. But yeah, right back, 24, around the 20 million mark. Uh, this is where Ralph being upstairs is going to hopefully benefit us and is hopefully going to work with Ten Hag on this. A right back, I would definitely say, is an area where Manchester United need improving. I mean, Dallo has been given his chance. He's been average at best, in my opinion. But Ralph has given him the opportunity. And looking at it, where we need to go, he's not been good enough. And he's an area that definitely is he's going to be replaced. I mean, Dallo, I'd say at best, is a standing right back right now. And I don't think there'd be many United fans actually concerned if, if Dallo was in the squad still and was part of uh, the Manchester United squad. It's up to him now. Now he's just appeared on the international stage. Does he want more game time? Is he expecting more? Well, realistically, that doesn't really count for Manchester United right now. If he doesn't want to be at the club and he wants to go elsewhere, maybe there's some money for us there. Young European right-back. Uh, just going to quickly run through the Super Chats as they come up as well. Uh, do get all your comments in as well, guys. Let me know what you think of everything that I bring up point-wise and the players that I'm talking about as well. Uh, Mikhail Roche says, uh, My Adam, I think with Ranić and Ten Hag, 150 million is needed uh, with free agents. Hey, I would have thought 200 million, to be honest. That's what I was sort of thinking was a minimum requirement. The politics and skullduggery in football is rife. Uh, you almost have to be a criminal to be a manager. Never a dull moment with this dressing room issue. Uh, Slow Sports News, mate. You have to be savvy. That's, and that's what I'm talking about. In this transfer window coming up this summer, Manchester United, they cannot afford but deals and negotiations have to be going on right now. They have to be going on right now and they have to look at things. It's like uh, Mukulele there at RB Leipzig. Right back. Do we need a right back? Yes, we do. 20 million. Not too bad. Not too much out of the budget gone. And then, like I said, if Dallow isn't wanting to hang around, you've got Ethan Laird coming back on loan. Brandon Williams can be a number two. We need to look at it and go, right, our number one players can't be the ifs and buts and maybe players now. We ain't in a room for developing them players. Pick your two right backs. You've got your cover, like Liverpool and City do. They have one man to cover every position. And yes, uh, Sinchenko is nowhere near as good as a Cancelo or a Kyle Walker. But he's good to come in 
when you need it for all the competitions that when these big players need a rest from. It's like when a an FA Cup game comes around, they come in, and that's where they gain their experience. The structure is there in them clubs, and that's what you need. And Ethan Laird coming back, and Brandon Williams coming back for right back. Bring in this quality right back who's got the European experience this season with RB Leipzig, Champions League and Europa League. Young. Ranjik knows him. He's seen what he's about. And if he is touted to be coming into Manchester United, then there is a target there that works for Manchester United. It works because he can come straight into the team and work in a system. And there's the key word, a system, which we've not had for 10 years at this football club in terms of tactics and formations and can slot right in. You know what I mean? There's no pressure on anyone coming in this summer because United are so crap and have dropped so low. It doesn't get any worse than that. And anyone coming in right now, and it's not an off-the-cuff comment to say this, but most players coming in right now are going to be better than what we have got. They really are. And a clean slate with a new manager, a new coaching system coming in, and everything that comes, there you go. I see people in the comments there. A few people have brought up Spence from Nottingham Forest. I actually know a couple of Nottingham Forest fans who do highly rate Spence and he's excellent going forward. He's strong, scores goals, his delivery is superb. And they just had that little bit of doubt. He needs a little bit more development in the defensive area. Now, he's one of them there. <clears throat> the price tag works, but that price tag compared to uh, Mukulele, let's say, who is ready to slot in right now with the European experience. Are we going to say that that is, within this £100 million budget, our right back for next season? Because the players that we buy now, this summer, are players that have to go into the team. There's no like development stage. That's what I was getting at a minute ago. These players have to go right in, right now. And that's where I think with Ranjik and Ten Hag and that system, which is key, that's why they have to be bang on the money straight away. There's no room for error now, United. Ten Hag needs all the help he can get and the players have to be right. It's no wonder the scouts have gone. The whole new setup now that's in place at Manchester United has to work from the get-go because we cannot afford to fall further behind. The financial restrictions that UEFA are bringing in, obviously another year out of the Champions League hampers the Adidas sponsorship deal and that money comes down and then the revenues come down and down and down and with the Glazers, if you like them or not, them dividends are not going to stop coming out of the football club, which means the money to spend on players is going to get less and less and less. And the infrastructure that we know that they're going to be investing in and have to invest in, which everyone at the, at the football club is aware of and is behind, training ground, stadium for the youth team, the women's team, has to all be invested. It's spread thin. And with no money coming in from player sales, where is that money going to come from? So it has to work quickly. United have to get back up there. And these players, yeah, maybe we're not going to make top four next season. And that money doesn't come in. So that's why this, the money doesn't come in next summer from Adidas. Maybe the revenues are down again because we're not competing in the Champions League in the highest level. But that's why now, why not invest that a little bit more? And this is why I look at the 100 million and go, they may have to just go above that to make things happen but they have to be savvy with it. And that's why the likes of Nadi uh, Mukaleli from RB Leipzig, the right back, with all the European experience of playing in that system, works better than a Spence for me because Spence hasn't got the higher level experience. And can we afford to spend the 14, 15 million on him instead of a player that's going to come straight in? That's what I'm getting at. Spence would be a player in the mould now of a Ethan Laird as a number two for Manchester United. That's where I'm getting at. Would you put all your money and trust on Spence coming straight in and hitting the ground running? You cannot throw that on a championship player who's had no experience, in my opinion. It could be a Robertson. We don't know. But can United, in the position that we're in right now, really be taking risks like that? It sounds harsh saying this because he's had a great season. And they might come up yet in the playoffs and they might not need to sell him on. Maybe a year in the Premier League and, yeah, the value will go up. But can United take a risk on going for that now? Or do they say, look, put something in place. Maybe we can sort of do like a payment structure where we sign the man, let him stay at Forest for another year, let him develop in the Premier League, but then have that option to buy next summer 
if we want to go down that road. He'd be a United player, and if he has a great season, then you know what? Maybe he comes in in that position. I don't know. You know what I mean? I just don't think Spence would be the right option for us right now. And that's why I think Ranić and Ten Hag, because we know Ranić has already said in his press conferences that he's due to speak with Ten Hag. That's going to be a key, key meeting. And things have to move on very, very quickly. Very quickly. I mean, 100 million is nothing. 100 million, <laughs> just as I say that there, Andy comes in there. I did 100 million, nowhere near enough. We need four or five players, mate. Yes. So if I brought in, say, Mukulele at 20 million, one year left in his contracts, maybe even get less than that because he's got one year to go. RB Leipzig, the club and how they are run, maybe you could get that in at a 15 million. You've got to look at that and say, there's a deal there, not too much money spent. Aaron Wambazaka could be sold to Crystal Palace. Cut down price, could literally pay for that. If you say, look, if United are going to accept their mistakes and actually own up to how the club has run, I mean, Ed Woodward's gone. Matt Judge has gone. The scouts have gone. Why not use this summer and take advantage of it? Who is there now and say, look, we got it wrong. Last summer and the summers before, the structure wasn't right and we did not get it right. We did not get it right. So we're going to change that. Take your losses is what I'm trying to say. Sell Wambazaka for 20 million and use that money not to put into anything else. Use that money as part of your budget. You're up to 120 million. You buy a player like Mukulele and you've still got 100 million to spend. And then you've got a right back in place that's going to slot right in with backup from a Laird or a Dallow if he wants to stay. Bit of structure down the right hand side, one area covered. I mean, yeah, you could say it's championship manager fee for football, but really, it's reality. That can happen. As long as United take that chip off the shoulder and accept where they are right now and say, look, we have to cut our losses. We have to take the loss on Juan Bazaka. He's not going to play under Ten Hag. Ranić is going to make that clear. Out the door. See you later. It's time to be brutal. And like I said, this summer needs to be that way. It needs to be on point instantly. Otherwise, we're going to fall further and further behind. Uh, Michael Gibson in with a super chat. I can't believe we ain't in for Kamara and Ericsson. We're just about to come on to them two next. So you've led me right into that one, mate. Nunes would take three quarters of our budget. Exactly why we need to be savvy. And that's where it gets complicated. So United really do have to think bargain basement. Okay, we have to look at it and go. Areas of the position we need. We need the holding midfielder. Uh, Bubakar Kamara, I must say, is out of contract in the summer. He is a strict specialist in holding midfield. Yeah, he's had the any goal contributions at all. I think he's got a goal to his name this season, 40-odd games this year. He's 22. He could literally be moulded by a Ten Hag into this system. It's a free transfer, for God's sake, Manchester United. Yeah, this is a man who has been playing in Europe this season. Yeah, albeit in the Conference League, which is probably where we're going to be. So you could say that's absolutely ideal for no money, cheaper wages. Why are we not giving a chance? Why are we not giving this player a chance and letting Ten Hag say, look, I can mould this player? Obviously, if he doesn't want him, forget it. But is is there? And what we're trying to say in this video is we are actually in a position where we can look at players and then players are available at a cheap budget. You know what I mean? You could get rid of, like I said there, if one Mazak is going there, he's gone, yeah? And you could cover um, Mukulele and Kamara's wages in one with one Bazaka. No cost to the club. And every United fan would look at that and go, that's good business. I can't really complain. No, you can't. Because the mistakes that were made before were by other people. Them guys are leaving the football club. It's now down to these guys who are in place now just to say, right, let's take this on the chin. Let's restructure this football club. Do you know what I mean? The wages of Wambazaka, Wambazaka, we're not even into the big wage earners yet. Wambazaka could pay. We could, let's just break it down. Simple layman's terms is Wambazaka leaves on the cheap for less than half of what we bought him for. But two players come in for that, all covered on his wage. That is doable. These players in, in France aren't 
going to be on massive wages. But this only works if United act quickly and get in there and say, look, Ten Hag's coming in. This is the project. You're going to be part of taking Manchester United up. Yeah, it's a big sell for Manchester United right now because although I'm saying this and this is United and taking these players, other clubs in the world, around world football, European football especially, are going to be looking at this as well and are in better positions than us and in a position to actually offer something more. Do you know what I mean? I mean, we can't be looking at Haaland now. And it's not a surprise what Romano said in terms of, look, United were completely dismissed as an option for Haaland because we cannot fulfil his potential. His potential is going and winning the Champions League and the Premier League. We are nowhere near that. We have to start off pretty much before uh, Sheikh Mansour came into City. We're pretty much in their position now. We're in their position now where we actually have to buy these players. We have to look around and find the best options. They're not going to be the higher quality of player. They're really not. But they could fit the system which starts the rebuild for Manchester United. That's what's important. That's what we need to be looking at. And you know what? Them players are there. Them players are there. Uh, Avatar says that uh, with Andreas, Juan Bazaka, Martial, Bay, and Henderson all supposedly wanting out, there's another 100 million used to the Bay, Laird, Williams, save some money. Yeah, all of them players are reserve players for me, and yeah, I'd be happy for them to be in the background, but we do need to invest in them areas that are going to come straight into the team, in my opinion. You could add Jones to that. Obviously, Mata and Matic leaving as well. The squad is going to be Fred Bear, and to be honest, I do think there's going to be five players coming in this summer. The calibre, I could not tell you. But we just there, in one sale of wan not bringing anyone else into the equation, for less than half the price, like I said, you bring in Mukulele and you bring in Kamara, holding midfielder, Sorry, right back. Shut Sorry, up, I... Siri. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to get in on the action as well, buddy. I watch what Apple watch. They don't scare me that. I wonder if someone was in, actually in the room with. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So forget what that says, and forget what the iWatch says. We're talking about Michaelili and Kamara holding midfield, uh, right back. Two positions we need. Two players that can come straight in, and then as you add a Danny Van der Beek to that midfield, you're going on a minute. All of a sudden, I've got a little bit of structure going on. And it's like everyone laughing. <laughs> Give me the giggles that then. Uh, so, Danny Van der Beek in midfield with a Camaro, with Mukulele at right back. Zero money spent out of the £100 million budget. And because we're already paying Danny Van der Beek, the squad from now, what we're looking at right now, to the start of next season... There's three players that you know would work in Ten Hag's system, zero money spent and no change to the wage budget. Should I be a director of football? Should I be up there as a, as someone, actually a CEO who actually looks at this? This is, we're football fans at the end of the day and we can see this. And yeah, you can say, look, yeah, you don't know the full ins and outs. It's a lot more complicated. Yes, it is. But you telling me Crystal Palace wouldn't pay 20 million? For Juan Bazaka, you're telling me that's not going to happen? Is anyone going to pay 20 million? Yeah, you're going to pay that for a player that's got good defensive capabilities. There are teams that will pay that. It's up to United to, to actually take that loss and say, yeah, we got it wrong. That's what I'm saying. And that's what's important in all of this conversation. They're all ifs and buts, but they are definitely doable. Juan Bazaka's out. He ain't going to fit. Use it. Dalo may not fit. Use it. Do you know what I mean? That's where you look at it and go, okay, easy for us to say. Yeah, complicated in reality, as always, we're United. But come on, it's quite clear that that can be done. Danny van der Beek coming back, Kamara in the middle. You know what I mean? Uh, Mikaleli at right back. No budget spent, no extra wages. And then you start to bring in Paul Pogba's wage. You bring in Jesse Lingard's wage, Cavani's wage. Do you know what I mean? There, what you're looking at. That's got to be close to a quarter of a million pound a week. And you've not even touched that yet. 
So you have got options there, and 100 million can go a long way as long as you are savvy and clever with the transfers that you make. And another player, yes, he's just coming to the twilight just of his career, and we've discussed this before. I think it was Jordan was a big advocate of Christian Eriksen. Christian Eriksen is a Premier League proven player who will definitely improve us right now. No? And disagree, guys, if you want. Tell me in the comment section, what do you think? I mean, a free transfer, again, for a player of that quality, who has played on the highest stage. The wages, yeah, that may be a little bit more for Ericsson, but that's where the Pogba, Lingard, Cavani, Matic, Mata wages, Henderson, even if you had that 150 grand a week. You know what I mean? Ericsson's going to be on what? 100 grand, probably. But it's still no loss to the football club. And still, we've not even touched that £100 million budget. And I keep thinking, yeah, in all of this, Adam, it's just FIFA. It's just championship manager. But I've just made four players and not spent a penny. And four players, which would improve our team right now. And I'm going, there is hope. There is hope out there for this football club. All we need to do is actually pray that this football club are looking at it the same way. And it's like what Neil Custis said with that 100 million. Look at the free agents. Look, be savvy. Do what Juventus do. Juventus are a massive club and they've not got a problem in taking free agents. I mean, Christ, look what PSG did this summer. Is that not proof that this actually works? Should we take that arrogant chip off our shoulder that United have? It's quite clear that, you know what, we can't just go out and buy who we want anymore. It doesn't work. The only time you can go out and buy a player who you want and actually uh, fit him into the team is if you've got a cohesive unit, which is already working, which is already proven, and you can add to that because you know exactly what you need. We are not in a position to say... Look, this is a fine, flowing, flourishing team which has got loads of potential. We're nowhere near that. So we have to build that. And then players don't come from marquee signings. It doesn't. The structure won't happen. A marquee signing uh, should be categorised as someone who is ready to come in and fit into an already well-oiled machine. We've seen what happened with Paul. It's not worked. The big names have come into United and ultimately failed, 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 failed not been consistent enough because there's no structure and there's no system there. Don't go out spending stupid amounts of money on one players anymore. Uh, Andy says, I agree, we should be all over Ericsson. We have to just accept it. We have to accept that's what it is. And if we don't, someone else will and we'll fall behind them. Because, like I said, every other European club is going to be looking at this and going, there's opportunities all over this free market, the loan market even. Do you know what I mean? These, these are there. We can utilise what we've got and make it work. Like I said, four players in, no money spent, and we've already got a better team. It's crazy. It is. Yeah, it sounds unrealistic, but it's not. Then players are there. We know they're there. Can the club act on it? That is basically where we're at. Forget the Harlands. It's already been said there. United are in no position. No position at all to even negotiate with these big players anymore. I would definitely take Ericsson on a free. He would be a leader as well. True, very true. I like the uh, Anthony from Ajax. Yeah, he's sort of touted really high price tag. And that's the only thing, Dazzo. Uh, Dazzo, cheers for the super chat, mate. Brilliant. Uh, Robin, uh, Isco or Ericsson? Mm, no, inconsistent for me. And an unproven Premier League player. I know that's a bit arrogant to say that, but right now I just think we're in a position where <clears throat> you look at it and you go, the pros of Ericsson way outweigh completely anything from a player like Isco, in my opinion. Isco needs to come into a team that's working. People, uh, obviously, we're going to play the game towards the end of this video and get your thoughts on anyone else coming in. So save them opinions. Maybe you could throw some swerve balls at me and we'll see exactly where we could fit them in. Uh, so moving on to... Bargain basements. We don't know what Ten Hag could possibly bring from Ajax also. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, 
You've got the likes of Timber there who have been touted. Uh, there were reports the other day that he wanted Hala to come in. I mean, yeah, United fans would automatically, arrogantly say it's not good enough for United. But what is good for United at the moment? Because not good enough for Manchester United. We're sixth, seventh in the league. So you're telling me that these players are not good enough for Manchester United? We're a top six team at the moment. So do we have to sort of lose that arrogance and forget about the past of where we was? Because we're not there and we're never going to get there thinking like that, I don't think. It's the rebuild, the ultimate rebuild. And it's not going to come from marquee signings or players who we think may be that quality that we need. The system needs to be in first, is what I'm saying. Uh, Kisele says, uh, Kamara, Ramangola, Toliso, Eriksson, Bellotti are uh, for free. Five easy players, but there has to be an intent from the club as well as Ten Hag. Yeah, as if Ten Hag wants them players, mate. Uh, I mean, Eriksson and Kamara, we just spoke about there. There's two. If you got half of them, you'd be happy, wouldn't you? Uh, you would be happy with two of them players coming in. Ericsson and Kamara would, I think, improve our team. So, yeah, then you're looking towards, like we said before, Kaleli would be a decent option at right back. With the cover we've got in the youth system coming through, I think that would be a definite option for us. I mean, there are other players out there. I'm going to get into them now. Uh that one has to go, mate. Let that one go. <laughs> Bail on the free. 100k basic, 251 plays. Yeah, that's that's talking FIFA and champ manager tackle now. I'm just going to... Gone. No more bail. Forget it. That, that ship sailed about four years ago for me. The time is gone. Uh, it's been and gone. And bail is never coming to Manchester United. That ain't happening. Uh, Anthony Stackhouse there in the comments says Basuma, yeah now the thing is with Basuma is you're going to have to pay money for him and there's going to be a lot of takers for him in better positions than what we are would he come to Manchester United yes, I do believe he would come that's not uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue would he come to United ahead of a Arsenal would he come to United ahead of a Spurs or Chelsea I don't think he would. Even a Liverpool, that that calibre of player, we're not going to be able to compete with the Liverpools and the Cities in the transfer market, in my opinion, this summer. They offer more, and obviously, it, the proof is in the pudding in terms of Haaland. We cannot match his ambition. City can. They can offer him a trophy straight away. And like I said, a team that is already working well. So... Uh, Karen took the kids. Did I miss your super chat, mate? I'm sorry if I did. Uh, I bring it up, uh, just relate to me again. I'll just have a quick scroll, scroll up just to see if I can see it again, mate. But yeah, uh, Haaland was literally case in point, wasn't it? Of why we can't actually compete anymore because we don't have any ambition, we don't have anything to offer these players of the standard. Of Haaland and people are saying already look that City done and dusted in the league that pretty much set it up for next season he's got to integrate first and we've seen I mean we knew Jack Grealish was a quality player but he hasn't he hasn't been given the opportunity he's been moulded in because City can afford to buy that type of player and you can afford to leave them players out, which Pick Guardiola had done and has got the right to do. Right now, we've got players coming in and it's like what Rashford said. In this, I want I want to know my standing within the football club. I want to know what game time, I want guarantees of what I'm going to be playing next season. Well, no, that doesn't work like that at all. Let's forget that. But that's the type of atmosphere it is around United at the moment. Until the culture... And the structure and everything has changed. Then you bring in them players. Now there are a couple of players I'm going to mention now, who would be in that category. Who would? Uh, Adam and Ten Hag agree with that. One of the best chats of the day. Yes, that would be a good number two. A couple of players now that I'm going to bring in. Uh, guys, get your opinion on it. 
And don't forget, towards the last sort of 15 minutes or so of the show, I'm going to get your opinions. So think of some swerve balls. Don't bring them up on the screen yet because I will miss them. I'm going to be key and watching on the comment section towards the backer end of the show. So get them ready for then. We've talked about the plays that we know are going to fit the system. We talked about how they work and why. I think United should be looking in that direction. And a lot of you guys have agreed on that, obviously. Uh, but now we're going into the market of where you could go wrong. In my opinion, you guys may disagree. Get your comments and let me know exactly what you think in terms of these players that I'm going to start talking about now. Now, the obvious, I have done a show on uh, Dembele. <laughs> God, here we go again. Dembele from Barcelona. 24. I mean, the guy has got quality oozing out of him. Free transfer. In the summer, wow, free transfer for Dembele. Have we got enough to handle that? Have we got enough in us? Has Ten Hag got enough? Does he want that issue? Because he is problematic and he has got an injury record of, um, we're in the sort of realms of breadstick legs. It's, he's scared every time the man goes into a tackle. If he falls on the floor, you're like, uh-oh, is he getting up? He's one of them players. He's one of them and... That's the type of player I don't want at the club right now. And yeah, you could say he's the quality that we need. Oh no, Rashford was the quality we need. Pogba was the quality we need. It's not working. He's probably as good as Cavani. He's going to play as much as Cavani because Cavani is the quality we need, but we just can't rely on him. Can we rely on this player? And like I said at the top of the show, it does not work unless we know that player is going to fit in. It has to hit the ground running now. And within that system, for me, I do not think that player fits us. I do not think Adembele is right. The qualities are there, yes, guaranteed. Uh, I'm just going to bring up the super chat quickly, Mike. Uh, would Ericsson's health scare be a concern in a high pressing team like what Ericsson had once? So, honestly, mate, if he's on a football pitch in the Premier League, there is no way anyone would take a chance on him. Uh, he has to be on point just to even be playing and pass all protocols. So I wouldn't worry about that. I would trust the medical system that's put in place and I would still go for Ericsson. He's proving now. I think he's had four goal contributions in nine games for Brentford. It's not bad for someone who's just come back and into the Premier League. No, like, like Ponting's League Retirement League, not mentioning any certain countries for them. Don't want to get myself in trouble, but you know what I mean. The Premier League is the hardest league in in Europe, in the world. And even Thomas Frank would have pushed these players. I've seen how Brentford play; they're high energy, and that's where I think I'm confident in Ericsson coming straight back in. I really am. Ericsson free, Kamara free, Mukalele twenty million, Nuno seventy million, Timber 30, 35 million, Phillips never assume or any CDM if Leeds gets relegated. Phillips is a no-brainer. And you could sell a few players to make that work within the budget, uh, Jim's 91. Good shout. Are we savvy enough, like I said at the start, to think like that? Well, hopefully, United actually watch this show, uh, employ me on the sides, and help them get this ball rolling. <laughs> it's not going to happen, I know. But, yeah, they're the players that I was talking about before and where you can be clever with it. The Dembele's of this world, nah, I just don't see that working. It's like uh, uh, Bolvo in the comment there, Ahmad. I mean, would you prefer to see Ahmad in that front line or Dembele? Ahmad cost us nothing. He's a player there that's been out on loan. It's not worked. He's had an injury. It's not quite worked for him. He's had a couple of goals at least. He's been playing. Ten Hag, young players, his record. New system, better team for him to play with, everyone with the fresh start, that's where I would go. It's not going to cost you anything and is a the potential. Yeah, it is potential, but it's there and we're saving that investment for where it, it really, really needs. See, at the end of this, we could have worked out what? If you bring Ahmad in there, that's like five new players in five positions in my team without spending a bleeding penny. From what I've said. And if you go back to the start of the video, if you are just joining us now live, the basic breakdown of my, you could call it, 
championship manager set up, but a realistic one, what United could do would be uh, Mukulele in, uh, the RB Leipzig right back, sell Wambazaka for 20 million, cover that fee, Mukulele and Kamara in the central uh, defensive midfield position under Wambazaka's wages. That's what you could get them players for. Danny van der Beek, already being paid by the club, comes in. No money there. Ahmad's there. Do you know what I mean? It's starting to fall into place. And by the end of it, we could have done all of this. Ericsson comes in as well. Sorry, that, that's the other player. You could have done all of this and have that money, that big money to buy that extra that midfielder like a Bazuma. Do you know what I mean? And like the comment just said then in the super chat, if leads go down, which is a very, very big possibility, looking at the games that they've got left, then Phillips, I think, would be a no-brainer for that money. I really do. And you still have money to spend on another midfield or even a forward. It's very, very interesting. And United have to be on top of all of this. And like I said, it all has to happen quick and hit the ground running. Otherwise... It's not going. It's not going to work for United. We can't be dragging our heels anymore in the transfer market. This already has to be being discussed. We've not even spoke about Jimmy Garner coming back into that midfield and maybe an option for us there. And just like that, you've got Kamara, you've got Garner, you've got Donny van der Beek, three central midfielders that would fit the Ten Hag system in your team for nothing. Zero pounds. Zero pounds. And no difference to the wage structure. That's being transfer savvy and that's being clever. That's what directors of football do. And that's why other clubs have passed us by because our structure is dead. And that's why half of that that was up there discussing this and working the United transfer system over the last decade is now leaving the football club. Because the realisation is you have to start competing and still be relevant within football matters, not just commercial matters, to earn the money. And the new restrictions that UEFA are bringing in are going to play on that as well, especially on our wage structure and how much we can actually spend. Uh, <clears throat> OK, moving on. Dembele, no, definitely not. The other player that falls into that no-no category, along with Bale, obviously, you've got uh, Paulo Dabala. Now, this was as close a sign as United balls up and nearly made a few years back. Tybala now at 28, plays the sort of off the striker sort of role, more sort of drifting number 10 sort of territory. Is that a position that Ten Hag is going to use? Tybala has qualities, we know this. He's run his contract down. Is this an area where United should be going? I mean, I can see him going somewhere else. I think I don't think his game suits the Premier League, if that makes sense. I think he will go elsewhere. I think Italy sort of suits him more. Uh, I could see him definitely linking back up with a Lukaku and playing that system. I can imagine a Lukaku and a Diabala working quite well, that sort of area. So for me, that, that sort of player, definitely, definitely not. And... Again, going down that road of a sort of high-profile player coming for a payday, get that off the table for me. That's not what we're about and not where we need to be. So, again, a Dembele, a Diabala. you look at the qualities that them players have got. Diabala 28, Dembele 24. Normally, you'd be going, yeah, we got to be all over that. we got to be in that. we got to be on got to be onto that. But that's where this club has gone wrong before. And now we're talking about not playing them players. Oh, sorry, not going for them players is a sign of where we're actually at. And I think is the right way to look at it. You may disagree. Let me know. Uh, a few super chats just coming in. I'm just going to bring up quickly. Uh, high pressure play demands high work rate. I know he may, he maybe wasn't up uh, to the task, but we didn't lose the last 27 games with Dan James in the starting 11, bring hungry players, not wage-heavy ones. Yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, Dan James, I understand the work ethic and where you're coming from with that. Uh, Emil Dunson there, cheers for that uh, super chat. But I say, I seen, I watched quite a few Spurs games under Bielsa, and he down tools a little bit, Dan James. I was really disappointed in what we actually knew Dan James was. 
Uh, and I've seen him not tracking back, not doing what he would usually do. Now he's obviously got a new lease of life under a new manager. And that, again, comes into it. But that type of player is the one that you're worrying about. And that's the type of step-up play that I'm talking about. So this is the risk of a Spence, like I said earlier on. Is he ready to come in now? Because we need now. Dan James was never a first-team player. But we played him as one because we spent money on him. We need players now, and this is why it has to be right, this window. They're going to slot in now. They need to come into the first team because the first team's crap. And it's not like we're building a squad there. We're building a first team, first of all, and that is what we have to get right. And that's why I wouldn't go for Spence right now. And a lot of people will disagree with me on that. I know. I just feel like it's too much with the pressure of Manchester United for that player to come in, having not played any of the higher level standard of football. No disrespect to Nottingham Forest, and I do hope that they come up. They're the team that I want to be promoted from the playoffs. City ground on that away day is epic. So, <laughs> uh, Real Freddy and Eric Ten Hag are shrewd uh, uh, elevators. Is that right? Yes, okay. They know we need players, clinical, hungry, but also minimal injury history. Board can't restrict their decisions. Key, very good point, James. That is where the structure and the culture such needs to be on point and why we need to hit the ground running with Ten Hag and Ralph Ranick. And is why I was encouraged with what, obviously not encouraged with what's happening with Ralph on the pitch, encouraged in what he's saying and what this club needs more than anything. I kind of give up on the league a long time ago and what was happening on the pitch. You go there and hope that you're going to see something that can give you some hope going into next season, really, more than anything now in games. And it's not there at all. <laughs> so, yeah, it's time you're looking at and you're clinging on to everything that you can towards uh, the summer and the transfers and what might come in the future rather than what you're actually seeing now. It's a sad state of affairs, it really is. But, uh, guys, we are at that time of show. I did say at the start and in the middle there that I want to get your opinions now. This is your show. Let me know what you think. Who are your swerve ball players? We've talked about a lot. Kamara, Eriksson, Dybala, uh, Mukulele, Dembele. All these players on free transfers. Now throw some at me. Get me with the players that you think. Is there anyone there that I've not mentioned? I've still got a few here on my list. I'll see if you collaborate with mine and we'll see if we come together on it but is there anyone that you think should come into Manchester United would fit that sort of mode that we've been talking about through this show uh, they're already coming in yeah I've already talked about Kamara and Kunku there's another one it's that attacking player isn't it uh, I just feel he's going to take too much of the budget that's the problem that's it Uh Lema, uh, Ravel Morrison, saw it out. Lema, Lema coming in quite a lot. Paul Torres, mm, not exactly going to be cheap. And the 100 budget, remember that, guys, 100 million budgets. Uh, my team, I actually thought my team, when I came in, I think I changed about five or six players there, not even hitting the 100 million pound budget. So can you match that? Can you get on that sort of length? Asensio, uh, Lema again, Wesley Snyder, free Adam. <laughs> yeah, he's still going. Let's, still, let's go and get Nicola Gaetan as well while we're at it, shall we? <laughs> I think he's due to come in, isn't it? Uh, and Kunku wouldn't go to United. It will destroy his career. Psh, that's what, you know what I was saying the other day. Tillemans now. Tillemans, I was waiting for this one to come up. There's a player. There's a man who can run a game. That's a player I would take at Manchester United. I would. I would take Tillemans 100%. He would be a player, I think, with the experience of the highest level, obviously international, European and Premier League. And I think he would go. I think the rumour is that Tillemans has uh, his sights set on United. His preferred option would be Manchester United. And that's a realistic target for me. Uh, Tillemans definitely hits, it hits that point for me in terms of what we actually need right now. And you're looking then, if we do what we did before, you've got a a Kamara in there, a Tillemans in there, Danny van der Beek coming back and Jimmy Garner. You've got four midfielders there coming in 
in the summer that we didn't have and we don't have right now. So would you say that would be enough for that area? Do you need one more? Do we need to go out and spend that money? If leads go down, do you bring a Phillips in as well? It's five midfielders. And the budget, 25, uh, is Tillemans actually on a free? I'm trying to remember now. I haven't got him on my list. If anyone could just double check that so I don't have to look. Uh, when Tillemans contract ends, I'm sure he's coming up to the end of his contract. Just need to double check on that. So obviously we're budgeting and trying to figure out if it comes in and costs anything. Wages aren't going to be a problem if who's leaving is leaving. So if Tillemans is on a free, it is just the ultimate no-brainer right now. Uh, Renato Sanchez, God. He was like an anomaly, wasn't he? He was just one of them. It's just like, wow, really? He was good, and then he was epically shocking. That was like a fall-off. Uh, 25 million for Tillemans. 20, yeah. Uh, makes 20 mistakes every game. Well, in that Leicester team, that's been underperforming all season. Very similar to, I would say, Tillemans, like a Bruno, playing in this team this season has dropped off and the whole form of the whole team has dropped off. Some people saying John McGinn cost, I think, uh, with the owners at Newcastle, uh, sorry, that Ever Aston Villa have got in place right now, I don't think would be ideal. I really don't. I think they'd take us to the cleaners. Richarlison, there's Richarlison again. Timber, the young, no question, players that would cost us money. Now, I mean, looking at there, from what I've took out of what you guys have said there, I think we're 100 million. I agree. Lamptey was my choice. Uh, but I understand the Mukulele option for Manchester United and where we're at. Uh, honestly, Tillemans is affordable. Yes. Phillips is affordable. Yes. Would both of them improve our team? 100% they would. Then you've got a you've got a nucleus there of a spine as such. Now, forward line-wise, that striker. That striker. Now, we've got a couple of lads who are going to be playing tomorrow night. Young lads, uh, 17 and 18 in McNeil and Garnancho. I think it's too soon. I think we need another two years for them. We really do. Ronaldo staying a year. Can we bring anyone through? Or do we really need to invest? It is unknown what is happening with Greenwood. And I'm just taking Greenwood out of the equation completely. I don't expect him to be wearing the United shirt again. And I've kind of just got accepted the fact that he's gone, along with Cavani. So two strikers gone. We need a striker. We need a striker. We also, and no one has brought this up, need a central defender. So do you invest in the striker? Because I think we're pretty much covered. So let's just say we bring in a Tillemans or a Phillips, along with everyone else, a Mukulele, a Kamara, and an Ericsson. So Mukulele, Ericsson, Kamara, Selwa Mazaka, there's them three. Done, dusted. You've got Ahmad to come in up front. If you bring in a Tillemans and a Phillips, that's going to be around 50 million for both of them. Half the budget left. Do we spend that on a Timber or a centre-back? Or I'm just looking. I think someone picked up on it. But just as a swerve ball. And throw me out if you want completely. But as a reliable sort of cheaper option who can come in and won't be bounced around everywhere, bounced off the ball, may improve alongside of Iran. Someone like a Tarkovsky from Burnley. I know what you're going to say right now. What are you on, Adam? But just look at it for a minute and go, is he worth coming in to Manchester United? 29, yes, but free. Premier League proven. Not, like I said, going to be one of these players that is not up for the fight. Yet, it could just be another centre-back that comes in and replaces Phil Jones as a reserve. You would have to accept that, being... And Manchester United are coming to Manchester United. You're going to have to take time on uh, time on the bench. Is that is that worth it on a free transfer and then buy another centre back as well? Do you know what I mean you could buy Timber and Tarkovsky for the same price, and it's still not hitting the budget? It's a good reserve player. Would he accept that? I do not know. 
Would he want to be first team football or would he want to take his chance and try and prove it when he gets the chance at Manchester United? Then you never know. You never know. He's only going to be like one of these players in that we're bringing in from uh, another European country where he's unproven and we don't know. I know, yeah, I'm going to take the stick for it and everything like that, but there is a player there that could come in and be one of them players that's just there in case we get the bad injuries to a Varane or a Lindelof. Oh, God, I can't remember him saying that. I mean, Lindelof isn't good enough on his own, I know. And, yeah, I can see people saying, yeah, it's just going to be another Lindelof uh, quality player. But if you bring that in and you bring in a Timber or another, you spend the other £50 million on a centre-back, then is that not sensible? I'm just putting it out there. It's an option. But who would who would your strikers be? Who is the forward you would be? Who can we get for that? Can we sell Martial? Can we put Martial in a deal uh, for a Nunes to Benfica? Would Martial be happy going playing football over there? It'd be in Champions League. Maybe it'd be right for him. I don't know where Martial's head's at. Does Martial come back into the team? This is, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, Dunk, people are saying Dunk is better than Tarkovsky as an option. Yeah, possibly. They're up there. Their options are there for us if we needed that extra cover. It all depends how much we can get done in one summer. That's key. And it is a lot, which is why I think things need to be moving right now. But you break it all down and you've got a possibility there of seven or eight new players coming into Manchester United. Not all new, some that have just coming back, obviously, but new in terms of what we've got right now and what's leaving and then what's going to definitely be there and can definitely be there this summer. Mukulele can be there at right back. Yeah, you could bring Timber in at centre-back. You could bring a Tarkovsky in at centre-back as an extra defender to cover the likes of Sales of Bay or Jones. That's there. Dunk, people would say, yeah. I know they don't sound marquee and what we're looking for, but this is Ten Hag now and what we're dealing with. And like I said at the start of the show, we have to be savvy and accept where we are, which is top six, and build from there. All them. So you could say uh, Mukulele, you got Kamara, you got Ericsson. All them players coming in. Sell one Zako. No extra cost. The forward line is where I've got the problem. Can we use Martial? We don't use him on the pitch. Can we use him to lure in Nunes? Do you know what I mean? It's like you're looking at who's looking for a striker right now. City have just bought Haaland, so they're out of the equation. If Mane goes to Bayern Munich from Liverpool, are they looking for that? He's not that type of striker, though, is it? And is he what we need? I mean, is he that type of striker that Ten Hag would go for? Is there anyone else out there you would actually say, look, fits that mould of what Ten Hag is looking to do? It's that, that's, that's the area of the pitch. I can work on what I've done and what I've structured there. Defence and midfield, it's a forward, that number one striker where I've got my issue. We've got young players coming through that are too young yet. We still have Toons Abbey, says Kyle. Yep, yeah, we do. We still have him. Is he worth bringing in instead of spending any money as a backup defender? He hasn't performed well. I do blame Ollie for curtailing his Manchester United career, though, in a lot of that. Uh, Dunk was terrible for Celtic, went on loan. He's big and slow, like Maguire. We need fast centre-backs, high-line timber, then. Would you say? Invest the money in the centre-back. You could get a Tillemans and a Phillips, if Leeds go down, and the Camaro for £50 million and add don't even have the beak to that. There's four midfielders. Five if you bring Garner back. Pogba and Matic, Matic can all go. And then you're not looking as threadbare in midfield. All workers. All will put the shift in. We know that. Not saying the others didn't, but coming to that end of the career where maybe they couldn't do what the midfield of a Ten Hag system needs. So you look at it there, the midfield, bang, 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 bang. You've got players that you can bring in back in defence. So I would say, yeah, Mukulele, 20 million, fit right into a system, bring him in, bring Laird back, or Williams back as reserve. If Dalla wants to go, he can go. And there's plenty of options there for us, there really is. Let me know what you think. Guys, obviously, when the video goes up, get your comments in. 
who is your, let's say, championship manager system? How are you doing it? Drop your comments in when the video goes up on YouTube in the comment section. All your players there and let's keep the conversation going. It can be done. We know it can be done. We just basically broke it all down to a point where United could spend 100 million this summer and have a whole new team there enough. As long as we utilise what we've got, what we've got on loan and the players that are leaving in the right way, structure it properly, we can do it completely. And it's the start that we need in the season coming up for Ten Hag. We have to accept where we are, but we have to hit the ground running in this transfer window. It's pivotal that United do that. Guys, that's pretty much it. An hour of the show completely flown by. Cheers for tuning in, everybody. Loads of super chats, new members, all your comments on point today, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, another little one just there as we finish. Cheers, Morgan. Uh, much appreciated, everybody. Loving doing these uh, single shows as well, guys. Uh, support has been fantastic. And, yeah, it is a bit of a football manager sort of uh, window coming up. But, realistically, tell me it's not. Like I said, drop your comments in when the video goes live. Guys, cheers for tuning in. It has been an epic show. I will be back tonight for the fan forum. Uh, we've got something special going on for the FA Youth Cup final as well, guys. My Instagram tag is right there at the bottom of the screen at the match 31, guys. If you're going to the FA Youth Cup final, if it's one of the games that you've managed to get to, you've not been able to get to Old Trafford all season, and you want to come over and have a chat, just hit me up on there. I'll let you know where we're at. Me. Kev and Beth are all at the game. So if you want to come over and say hello and have a chat, talk football, talk United, let me know. Hit me up, DM me on there. The DMs are always open. We'll have a chat and then hopefully we'll see you outside Old Trafford as well. And hopefully it'll be a good game. But yeah, loads of content on that coming tomorrow as well. I'll be back on the fan forum tonight at 8 o'clock uh, with the guys. So tune in for that. Uh, and guys, that's it. And enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers for tuning in. Like, share and subscribe as always and I will catch you all later.